go ahead and respond to that first question. Somebody's going to answer this, and it's not going to be me. Let's set it up again. You've got an equation, okay, with a variable in it, or a few variables. And you have some, somebody walks up to you and says, here you go. This is the solution to that equation. How do you verify that that's the solution to the equation? So if you tell him you put that number into the variable, each side, both of sides equal each other? There it is, right? Simple, simple enough. You put the number into the variable, and both sides come out to be the same. If it's an equation, both sides should come out to be the same. If it's an inequality, it's a different story. But if it's an equation, and you find a solution, or somebody hands you a number and says, this is the solution. The way to verify that is to plug it in and do all the math, all the arithmetic, and both sides are the same. Both sides are equal. OK. So the solution is a number we can plug in, and both sides will be equal. All right? So I'm going to say 3. Right? 3 is a solution to this equation. Is that true? Is 3 a solution to this equation? How can we verify it? verify that 3 is the solution to this equation, or do we need some other? Put it into the variable. <coughs> put it into the variable. Put it 3 there. Put 3 there. Will it come out to be equal? We'll have yeah. 4 plus 18 and 4 plus 18. It's the exact same thing. Uh, can you think of another solution? Whether it be 2 here and 2 there, 5 there and 5 there, negative 6 here and negative 6 there, it's all going to come out the same. Because we're doing the exact same operations on the left side and the right side. They're identical to each other. It's, uh, it's the root of the, the term identity. Okay. So why is the conclusion incorrect? 
correct because sides are going to have to be identical to each other. They're going to have to do the exact same thing to get the exact same number. Uh, we call that an identity. Or if you don't call it an identity, you say infinite solutions. That's fine too. That's what identity means. And it's infinite solutions. Okay. We just as a another exercise, could this equation be solved differently? You have to solve it the same way that you know did it. Anybody view it differently? Come out with a different answer. It's not going to you come out with the same answer, you know, infinite solutions for identity. But the way Kumail did it, you multiply two, distribute it to two, and distribute it to one half, which is equal to there. So we approach it differently from the beginning or in the middle, Jada? Um, you subtract, subtract four. Oh, from here in this step. So the first step's the same, the second step will subtract four from both sides. Little note here, six G plus four. Subtract 4 instead of subtracting 6g. 6g equals 6g. Right. Did you do anything from there? Did you start to do something? I feel like you didn't need to divide it by 1 half. Okay, you could have divided by 1 half. So divide that by 1 half, that, that'll go away. So that means multiply this by 2, so you get 4 to distribute through here, and we don't have anything to distribute over here. We get 6g equals 6g right here, that just well that tells you right there that's an identity. Right? 6g equals 6g, it's just kind of telling you the obvious. So, yeah, we could uh, subtract 4 at this stage, or at the first step we could have divided by 1 half, which in this case would give us 4 times 3g plus 2 equals 12g plus 8. Okay. And that, now that we look at it this way, it also just kind of stays in the obvious. We're saying if you were to distribute to four, this is what you would get. Okay. So they're both identical. Not only are they equivalent, they're identical to each other. So here we are, Kira. Kira doing the work here. She can solve correctly. So again, write down in your own words. In the step marked with an arrow, why is Kira's work incorrect? Say that that step right there that has an arrow pointing at it. Why is that incorrect? This arrow right here pointing at this step, right? Why is why is this incorrect? Which means we went from here to there. Why? Why is whatever happened from here to there, why is that incorrect? Did you uh, add it or something? Yeah, you added, well, which two? This, this two. 2H, yeah. Two H, yeah. So added, yeah, this got added, uh, or 2H added to it. And then, you know, this 2H just kind of just and we should have done what? Minus. Minus 2h from both sides. Okay. That's a common thing to happen. With if, you, if you look at it, well, this is the other question I want to ask. What do you think caused this mistake? Why do you think Kira made this mistake? It's all speculation. Right? There's no right answer. If you made this mistake, why do you think you might have? What, what might have caused you to make this mistake? Made, if you were to make, if you were to have made a mistake.
mistake like that, adding two h to both sides in that step before the arrow, uh, you know, why might you have done that? Why wouldn't you have made that mistake? Okay, so you might have just seen a couple of uh, like terms and just said, hey, let's put those together. Um, and just maybe been going too fast and didn't, didn't think about the, that like term is on the other side of the equal sign. Good, yeah, that's a great reason why that might happen. A plus like term, can you see that? Uh, any other ideas? I don't know what I would be thinking. You see a 7H and a 2H putting together, or a 5H and a 2H putting together, you see 7H. Okay, um, let's say, have subtracted, not subtracted, 2h instead of adding. Um, maybe she thought this is what this should look like terms. Maybe just uh, So Kira gets done and gets nine sevenths. How could Kira have checked to see if her answer was correct? Put it in brackets. And she put it in her brackets. Put it in 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 brackets. Put tells us that can't be the right solution. Um, and if you take the time to do that work, you'll find it does not give you the correct solution. Okay. So substitute 9 sevenths for h in the original equation. Pass it on over. And we're about to take a quiz, but also I gave you that uh, review packet that uh, you should take out and hopefully you worked on it, looked at it, practiced a little bit. If you have any questions from that, we can go over those after that quick. So I handed this out last time, yeah? Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Yeah. Okay, so you have it. The last thing we do before I pass out the quizzes, when we start taking the quizzes, is if you have any questions from the packet, fire away.
pictures for a yearbook is nine and a half inches wide by 13 inches tall. Anytime there's like a physical object involved, always draw a picture. Okay. Um, so a piece of paper, you should definitely draw a piece of paper. Uh, it's nine and a half inches wide. Nine and a half inches wide. Uh, 13 inches tall. Okay. The top margin is three quarters. Bottom margin is one inch. Um, how many one and a half inch tall pictures can fit in one column? Um, so we have, we're gonna have several columns of pictures, but here we're gonna have a picture, a picture, a picture. Um, Yes, they're not going to have any space between them because the wording doesn't seem to suggest that. So here's a picture, a picture right underneath that, a picture right underneath that, and it continues like this until we get to the bottom margin. So now we see the uh, physical representation of, of what's going on here. Um, and now that we have that, we're going to use it to solve for how many pictures we can fit in there, right? This dot, dot, dot represents that we don't know how many pictures can fit there. Um, we do know what each of these is, what, an uh, inch and a half. 1.9 inches. Right, now we have that picture, how are we going to use it to solve for the number of pictures? next picture is going to have three-eighths of an inch between it, and it's going to be an inch and a half, and that'll continue all the way through down to the bottom, where we need the margin. We want to know how many of these pictures we can fit. the perimeter of the area. So what we want to know is how many pictures we can, can stack on top of each other. Um, what would, the perimeter would be like um, adding up all the sides, right? So what would that tell us about how, much, how many pictures will fit vertically here? Okay. Uh, but what we want to know how many pictures can we, can we put three, four, five, Okay, so um, this area is uh, is dead space; it doesn't get used. And so, if we subtract, uh, we take thirteen. Okay, let's maybe write it like this: thirteen uh, is going to be the the sum of all of this stuff, right? So it's going to be that inch margin plus that uh, three quarter margin. I'm using fractions now because we have fractions here. Um, that one inch margin 
plus that three quarter inch margin, um, right, that plus that, that's part of that 13. And there's obviously more, right? Plus, plus, plus. Kind of add up all the stuff that adds up to 13. Okay? Mm -hmm. Three eighths, just three eighths, just the number three eighths. So you only need to add on one, what about, but if there's two three-eighths, if there's, if there's more than two pictures, if we have a third picture, you have three-eighths and another three-eighths. Mm -hmm. Times x, what would x represent? Mm -hmm. Okay, times the number of pictures. Is the only thing that I'm gonna say about that. Three-eighths is the, is the amount of space between pictures, right? right? Well, it takes two pictures to have one space that make sense? So the number of spaces is not going to be the same as the number of pictures. Because right? there's not going to be a space above this picture or a space below this picture. So if we, had, uh, if we had five pictures, how many spaces would there be between them? Four. If we had seven pictures, how many spaces would be between them? Six, right? So how many spaces are there? Let's say if there's x pictures, how many spaces are there? One. Just one space? Um, there's x in there. If there's five, how many spaces are there? There's, there's, there's four. One, two, three, four spaces. If there's uh, six pictures, how many spaces are there? If there's seven pictures, how many? Third. Okay, right? So how are you finding the number of spaces each time? John? X subtracted by one. X subtracted by one. You subtract one from the number of pictures and you get the number of spaces between all the pictures. Right? So whatever the pictures, the number of pictures are, you're already going to subtract one from it. So you wouldn't multiply three eighths by X, but by one less than X. So by X minus one. Okay, so we've added up the margins. The spaces between the pictures is there anything else that needs to add up to 13? Cameron? Just one and a half? <coughs> John? One and a half x. One and a half times x, right? We got one and a half times the number of pictures. We got three eighths times one less than the number of pictures. Okay, one and a half x. Uh, I should, uh, should back that up. One and a half. Is that everything? Should all that add up to, eight, to 13? Okay, so now let's solve for x. How do we solve for x? That's just the number of pictures. So we solve for x. Anything we can do at all. The, the, the trouble that a lot of students run into is they try to do everything in their head before they start, just to something. Take one step. What's one step we can take right now? Great, let's do it. 13 equals one plus three fourths plus three eighths times x is three eighths times x minus three eighths times one is just three eighths. Combine the x terms, the like terms, okay. Um, to do that, what do we need? Common denominator, what's the denominator gonna be? Eight, okay, eight, which means this should be, what? Multiply two times four, we get eight, right? Three times four, we get 12. Okay, so we combine like terms, uh, we get, uh, let's start them over here. Eighths x plus one plus three fourths minus three eighths plus fifteen over eight x equals thirteen. Then 
Yeah, you got something else? No? Okay. Making progress. We just have to take it one step at a time. I don't need your time. I don't need your time. That's why I'm just sitting waiting for you guys to do it. You've got some sure. The numbers, we got a bunch of numbers, they're all just numbers, we can add numbers together, okay? So to do that, we're gonna need some common denominators. What's our denominator gonna be? Eight, okay. Um, so this is gonna be some number of eight, so we're gonna multiply four by what? Two, two to get eight, so three by two is six, and one needs to be a number of eight, so it's just gonna be eight eights. Okay, so now we can add them all together. Uh, 8 plus 6 is 14, minus 3 is 11 eighths. Now we need 13 to be a number of eights. 13 over one. 13 over one is a, a fraction that we can use. And then we can multiply one by eight. We multiply 13 by eight so that we can have eights. Um, so we'll turn this into eights. What's 13 times eight? 104. Okay, 104 over eight. So 104. Over eight minus eleven over eight will give us what? Thirteen. Thirteen. <coughs> One oh four over eight minus eleven over eight is is thirteen. Oh. numbers, it doesn't matter. We just subtract the numerators because the denominators are the same. So 93 over 8 equals 15 eighths x. How do we solve for x? Divide by 15 over 8. Okay. Definitely 15 over 8 divided by 15 over 8 is 1. 1 times x. That's good. Multiply by 8 over 15. Was how many pictures can we fit? How many pictures can we fit? Six. We're not going to put six point two, right? You're not going to cut somebody like chop their head off or something and stick them in there. That wouldn't be nice. So maybe we could fit six and uh, maybe make the spacing in between each of them a little bit bigger. Because I said the spacing would be at least six sixteenths of an inch. The tough part of this is setting it up and the fact that there's fractions in it. It's not that big. Okay. Do you have any
another question? From this or from the book? From the homeless? From the brain? Identity or infinite solution. If you just get like four equals four, you need to draw a conclusion. Because always the answer needs to be like x equals a number, right? We can't express it that way if there's an infinite number of solutions or an identity, so either way, identity or infinite solution. Alright? I'll stand up here for five more seconds while you look around until I say unless somebody else has a question. Let's go ahead and um, put those away, put everything away except for standard quiz taking materials, next to paper.